So I like using Claude. I've used ChatGPT, um, and again, I like Claude because it has some features that I think are just are really helpful. Um, but in both ChatGPT and Claude, they have ways that you can actually sort of constrain what you're looking on. So ChatGPT has custom GPTs. Uh, Claude has what are called projects. So I have a project here, which is called Revit API. And what's really good about it is that I can actually set this up with project knowledge. So I have a, a library of code that I've written over the years this is it right here um, in GitHub. So I can load these up into Claude. So this is actually the knowledge that it's going to be working on. So now when I start to you know, do my prompts inside of Claude, it kind of knows you know, how I've programmed. It knows a lot more about the Revit API because it's basing it off of all of this, all these individual code files that I've kind of brought in. Basically you can upload files Right. And it's going to use that knowledge. So when you ask a question, it's less likely to hallucinate or just exactly. make bad code yes. because it has a, a source of information that is private. So that means by default, the cloud users they might not get the kind of experience you have since you, you gave them, feed them more. Right. Knowledge, and that's, right? yeah, exactly. So I've done um, custom GPTs. I have a custom GPT as well. I find Claude's interface is a little, is a lot sort of user friendly. Um, but what I've done, so in the Revit Add-in Academy, actually students have access to that custom GPT. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just testing out Claude now, but same thing there that you can get access to the, you know, this particular. Yeah. Okay. You can share it to you other people share it. too. Yeah. Now I have a series of prompts that we're going to put in here and we're going to use that. And again, this is going to be based off of, it's going to be using a lot of my project knowledge, but my first prompt, let's say I want to create a series of kind of text editing tools. So I'm going to ask it to um, write a C sharp add in for Revit that gets text notes in the, in the Revit file and it changes text to upper class. And then I'm asking it, so use the command add in template. That's something that I have here as my project knowledge um, and output the code for a command add in. So I'm just going to put that right here and I like doing this kind of side by side. So that way I have this, I can kind of look at the code first and I can make sure that there are no hallucinations. There's, you know, everything kind of looks like it should. Um, Claude does this where it creates these artifacts. So you'll see it opens up this little window. So I'm seeing its response here and then this is the output. So this is the actual code that it's giving me. I'm not gonna grab everything. I'm gonna cherry pick a little bit cause I know, you know, what basically what I need to put into Visual Studio. I'm gonna take that code and I know I don't need that stuff and I'm just gonna drop in that code. So I'm not, you know, I'm looking at this, I see, okay, conceptually it's getting a filtered element collector. So this is actually getting all the text notes in the model. Um, it's starting a transaction, so it's locking the model. Uh, and then it has a loop here. So it's looping through all of those text notes and then it's converting the text here to upper and then it commits. So it's pretty simple as far as coding goes, but it generated a lot of code that I didn't have to sit there and type. I'm like, okay, so far so good. So that's one tool down. Now where this starts to get kind of interesting is let's say I want to create a user interface. So I want to create a user interface because, you know, I have, now I have these four tools and I can click a button for each one, but I don't really like, I want something that looks pretty good. So I want to just be able to select not, you know, I want uppercase or lower. I want to have a drop down. I want to create a WPF form. So WPF is a type of technology. It stands for Windows Presentation Framework and allows me to create user interfaces. And it actually does it using um, a markup language called XAML. Um, if you've ever done any, you know, if you've done any forms or anything with C Sharp, typically you're going to be working uh, with XAML. And it's kind of a different type of language, but it will create um, you know, users forms and controls and buttons and all that. So I'm going to put that in here and I'm saying, um, what I want you to do is to put a label at the top that says BIM pure tools. Uh, there's going to be another label that says selects the text note. And then there's going to be a combo box with four options. So you can click a drop down. You can choose uppercase, lowercase title case, whatever you want. So I'm going to plug that in and what it's going to do. You'll see that the code is going to look a lot different. It's going to generate, um, this type of code right here. This is in that XAML syntax. So this is, you know, pretty straightforward. It's not a whole lot of code. It's going to generate it for me. And I don't have to do all that little bits of typing as I go through it. Here's our, our form code. So I'm going to basically grab that. 
And then inside of Visual Studio, I'm going to go ahead. I don't have a, a window here, but I'm going to add one. And so I'm going to create a window. Uh, I'm going to call this text case win. And we're going to add that in. So once I do that, we'll see it here in the project browser. And I'll get like a little bit of a, you know, it has a, like a WYSIWYG. So I can kind of see what that looks like. So if I split this, here's my window. There's nothing in it yet, but here's the code that generates it. Um, and, and again, this, this is like a whole other language that you have to know, you know, when you want to create forms. So I took all of my code. Let me grab that. I'm going to copy it. And now I can just go ahead and paste it in right here. And what you'll see what happens is, okay, it, there's my window. So it created that window for me based on all of this code. Um, and now we can take a look at our user interface one here. So here's our BIM Pure tools. I can choose these options. So let's say we want to go to lowercase and then I click OK. And then it, it did that conversion for us. Yes, we had some pre-baked prompts, but we didn't have, you know, we didn't have any pre-existing code. Uh, and then we were able to, you know, create a, a sort of iterate through that pretty quickly. And, you know, a lot of that time is spent, would have been spent writing code, me sitting there typing, which nobody wants to see. I'd much rather kind of cut and paste it.